Welcome to the Solar Decathlon Building Science Education Series. I'm Paul Torsellini, and in this episode, we'll discuss ways to produce hot water and the energy impacts of producing hot water. Hot water can be a significant load in homes and multifamily buildings. As heating and cooling loads decrease, hot water energy percentages increase. Hot water is used for bathing, cooking, dishwashing, clothes washing, and cleaning. Buildings that have significant functions in these areas will have large hot water loads. This episode will start with the science of water heating, and in another episode, we will cover different types of hot water systems. The amount of energy required to heat hot water is Q is equal to mc sub p delta T, or the mass of the water times the specific heat of the water times the change in the temperature of the water. On a basic level, we can relate this to the definition of a British thermal unit. The amount of energy to heat one pound of water one degree Fahrenheit is the BTU. The relationship of the heat to the mass and the temperature difference is the specific heat by definition. For water, the, spe uh, the specific heat is one BTU per pound degree Fahrenheit. The metric system is a bit confusing here as the amount of energy to heat one gram of water one degree Celsius is one calorie. There are 4.19 calories in a joule, so the specific heat of water in the metric system is one calorie per gram degree C, or 4.19 joules per gram degree C. We typically measure water as the volume and not a mass. So density times volume is mass, and we can rewrite the equation as Q is equal to density times volume times C sub P times delta T. If the density specific heat and temperature difference are constant, we can also write this as a rate, or Q dot is equal to the volumetric flow rate V dot, times the density times C sub P times delta T. The density of water is 8.32 pounds per gallon. Thinking about temperature, the starting water temperature is close to the water temperature coming in from the city water system or perhaps a well. This is highly dependent on season and where the water comes from. Water from wells is at a deep ground temperature and is very stable year round. Water from surface reservoirs or from rainwater collection systems can vary by season. On the supply temperature side, water is often produced and stored at temperatures above 120 degrees Fahrenheit. This is to minimize growth of organisms in the water. However, showers are often mixed with cold water to 105 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Many hot water heaters have a mixing valve such that all water leaving is at this lower temperature. In some cases, hot water is delivered to washing equipment at a higher temperature. Now for an example. We will use 110 degrees Fahrenheit as a hot water supply temperature and 55 degrees Fahrenheit as a cold water supply temperature. If a shower uses two gallons per minute of water for 10 minutes, the amount of energy required to heat the hot water is two times 10 times the density, 8.32, times the specific heat, one times 110 minus 55. All of those numbers have appropriate units. And if you do the math, that comes out to 9,152 90, BTUs. If the energy factor of the hot water is 0.95, which is typical for an electric resistance unit, then the energy required is 9,634 BTUs, or about 2.8 kilowatt hours. If, as an example, electricity is 15 cents a kilowatt hour, then the cost for the shower is about 42 cents. How do we reduce this? There are only a few options. We could use less water, either with a shorter shower or a shower head that lets less water through, or we could take a colder shower. We could also install a heat pump hot water heater with a higher energy factor. If the energy factor 
of the example is 3, then the energy needed now is now just over 3,000 BTUs, or 0.89 kilowatt hours, or a cost of 13 cents. That's quite a change from the 42 cents we started with. We could also switch to a lower flow shower head, say one and a half gallons a minute, then the energy becomes 0.67 kilowatt hours, or about 10 cents. That's a substantial savings from where we started from. Another metric that is sometimes used is the amount of energy to heat a gallon of water for the needed temperature difference. In this case, 8.32, the density, times the change in temperature, 110 minus 55 degrees Fahrenheit, is 458 BTUs per gallon of water heated for that 55 degree temperature difference. A rule of thumb typically talks about 500 BTUs per gallon, so a little bit higher than the number we just calculated. This 500 BTUs per gallon is a handy number as a quick tool to think about how much energy is needed for hot water. Remembering that it assumes a certain water supply temperature as well as a temperature of the hot water. Let's talk about the power needs for the moment. Using the same original example of two gallons a minute, if we need to heat two gallons a minute of water instantly to take a shower, then Q dot is two gallons per minute times our density, 8.32 pounds per gallon, times one, our specific heat, times our temperature difference, times 60 minutes in an hour, that's almost 55,000 BTUs per hour. Translating that to kilowatts, it's about 16 kilowatts of electricity. To put that into perspective, that's more electricity than most houses draw, even when everything else is on. One way to solve this problem is to add a storage tank to store some hot water for later use. That storage helps reduce the size of the electric element to something that is that normal houses can install. That heating element might only be 3,500 watts, which is still quite a large power draw, but some amount of water needs to be stored in the tank in order to achieve that electrical resistive load. And so that's all for our example calculations. Hopefully this helps show you the various parameters that influence energy use in water heating. As a follow-up to this episode, look for our discussion of different water heating technologies. In the meantime, please let us know if you have any questions about this episode, and thanks for watching.